Hey there, it's Corey. In this video, we're going to be using the multiply function to set up an edge to edge pantograph using Pantovision T2. Now that we've done the groundwork from the previous video, we can set up a pantograph to start quilting. We're going to open up our pattern pad and choose a pattern of our choice. If you don't have any patterns in your pattern pad yet, visit your pattern library to add them to your pattern pad. You'll drag and drop over the pattern of your choice and close your pattern pad. Set your pattern repeat at the upper left corner of the quilt grid. Choose your width and height for your row. Normally you're looking at the height just to maintain ratio. You can change it by tapping in the height box and entering what you'd like, or you can grab the bottom right hand square of your repeat and just expand it out. Make sure that you don't over expand past your quilting space that you have for your machine. So I'm going to do about 11, almost a 12 inch row for this one. With the repeat selected, I'm going to hop into my multiply feature. Make sure that my row gap, column gap, and offset are all set to zero. And make sure your across is set to one. And I'll begin to tap more to fill up my row. Once I get close to the end, of this section. I can either add one more over if I really would like to have only an 11 inch row, or I can keep one less and expand it out later. I'm just going to add one more over and I'm going to tap on apply. What Pantovision does is it remembers the numbers from your last Panto that you ran. So last time I did six rows down, so now I need to change that. Just by pressing on the minus key, I can go up or down away. It's always good to have a little extra than not enough. So I have one all the way across with this full row and then five rows down. Between these rows I have gap. I can tap on the row and move it to exactly where I want these to nest up together and it will do that throughout the whole entire piece for me. I'll tap on accept and return back to the transform. Transform is going to show me the whole entire piece as one section. I can make any adjustments to the row that I want by stretching these down. If I want to pull this all the way up, I could do that. Now, when you move all those around and manipulate to fit your grid, remember that does change your row size. It might make it smaller or larger. So definitely make sure that you're staying within your quilting space. I like the way that this looks by shrinking it down just a little bit. So I'm going to press and hold in the center of this section and let go. A box will pop up with my right click menu. Down at the bottom, I'm going to tap on ungroup. With ungroup being tapped, now these rows are individual pieces to work within running view. I'll bring my machine a little closer to the starting point of the first row. Before we get started quilting, we want to make sure that we do save our project. So at the top left of the screen, you can tap on file. And if it's the first time saving, you're going to go down to save project as, and you're going to want to enter in a file name. Now you don't have a keyboard with your Pantovision physically, but you do have a virtual one. So if you swipe up from the bottom of your screen at the bottom, right, there is a keyboard icon. If you tap on that, you can then move your keyboard around. When you open up the keyboard, it does take focus away from the file name section. So make sure you tap back in the file name section and give a name for your quilt. So this one will be Swirls Quilt. I can close my keyboard and then tap on Save. We'll select the first row and tap on Running View. Now I get a zoomed in version of where I'm going to be, so I'll bring my machine exactly to the starting position. I will bring up my thread, do any tie offs that I would like for that section, and then I can start quilting. <laughs> 